Hello and welcome back. In this chapter, our main focus will be to discuss about various electronic filters that exist, starting from passive filters and in a future chapter we will take this to a step further and discuss about active filters as well. The reason why we cannot talk about active filters in this chapter is because we didn't cover operational amplifiers yet and active filters are all about operational amplifiers. Anyway, in order to understand active filters, you need to understand passive filters, but before that you need to understand the difference between time domain and frequency domain, and this is what we will talk about in this course, so let's begin. When you look at an electrical signal on an oscilloscope, you see a line that represents changes in voltage with respect to time. At any specific moment in time, the signal has only one voltage value, right? What you see on the oscilloscope is the time domain representation of the signal. A typical oscilloscope trace is straightforward and intuitive, but it is also somewhat restrictive because it does not directly reveal the frequency content of a signal. In contrast to the time domain representation in which one moment in time corresponds to only one voltage value, a frequency domain representation which is also called a spectrum conveys information about a signal by identifying the various frequency components that are simultaneously present. Because frequency domain representation identifies the various frequency components of a signal, the x-axis is the frequency and the y-axis is the amplitude of the signal. We can clearly see that a pure sine wave which let's say has a frequency of 5 kHz and a voltage of 3 volts, has only a single component and that is a line situated at 5 kHz with an amplitude of 3 volts. Things get trickier when we talk about a square wave. What we see here is that a square wave is built upon various components which are nothing else but multiple sine waves having different frequency combined together. Also we can notice that each component has different amplitude, so this one has a greater influence on the square wave than this one. An ideal square wave has a zero rise time by definition. It is not a real waveform, it is an approximation to the real world. However, useful insight can be gained by looking at the spectrum of an ideal square wave and using this to evaluate real waveforms later. An ideal square wave has a 50% duty cycle, is symmetrical and has a peak voltage of 1 volt. What you have to remember is that if this square wave, let's say, has a frequency of 1 GHz, the sine wave frequency values in its spectrum will be multiple of 1 GHz. This means that the first line will be situated at a frequency of 1 GHz, the second line will be situated at 2 GHz, the third one at 3 GHz, and so on. Frequency domain representation is also called the Fourier series, which is a way of representing a periodic function as a sum of sine and cosine functions. In order to understand Fourier series better, let's try to visualize the signal in frequency domain in our simulator. Alright, here we are. This is our signal, which is a pure sine wave, and below that we have its sine and cosine components. Since this is a sine wave, we will not have any cosine components, right? As you have noticed, there's only sinus component situated at 221 Hz, which means that this sine wave has a frequency of 221 Hz. The other components that you see here are the multiple of this frequency. If we reduce the amplitude of this component, you can see the change in amplitude in our signal as well. What happens if we increase the amplitude of a random component? As you can see, basically what happens is that we add two sine waves together having different frequency and the result is nothing else but a distorted sine wave. Alright, let's move forward. This is the spectrum of a cosine wave, 
which has only one single cosine component. This is for a triangle wave, which basically is uh, built upon two cosine components. And this is a spectrum of a square wave. 